This video talks about complete androgen insensitivity syndrome. Now, I'd like to take this opportunity to also talk about the other sex chromosome disorders that can be easily confused with one another. Okay, so let's talk about uh, complete androgen sens sensitivity syndrome first. So in this syndrome, it's actually one of the androgen insensitivity syndrome. So what's the difference between androgen insensitivity syndrome and complete androgen insensitivity syndrome? Well, the difference is quite obvious. In complete androgen insensitivity syndrome, there is no sensitivity to the androgens, and it falls under the umbrella group of androgen insensitivity syndrome because there are other cases where there is partial androgen insensitivity. Now, another name for complete androgen insensitivity syndrome is also testicular feminization. And pheno phenotypically, these are female. So when you look at them, they're females, but actually their genotype is going to be a male. Um, secondary sexual characteristics of a male will not develop. Uh, they are going to have defective dihydrotestosterone receptors. And on a physical exam, you're going to see a vagina that has a blind pouch. Uh, you can find testicles up in the abdomen, which has not descended. And obviously, phenotyp genotypically, they are going to be XY rather than XX. Okay, so now let's talk about how androgen insensitive, complete androgen insensitivity syndrome can fall under pseudohermaphrodite. By the way, what is the difference between pseudohermaphrodite and a true hermaphrodite? In pseudohermaphrodite, we are going to see the phenotype. different than the genotype. Okay? That's pseudohermaphrodite. If that is pseudohermaphrodite, what is true hermaphrodite? Now true hermaphrodite will have both testes and ovary, okay? Where in pseudohermaphrodite, the phenotype is going to be different, different than the genotype, so they will have testes, but they're going to have a, maybe a blind pouch vagina, okay? So that's why the phenotype will be different than the genotype. The genotype is telling to make testes, with the phenotype, because of the uh, androgen insensitivity, we are going to have a blind pouch vagina. Now, there are two different kinds of pseudohermaphrodite. Pseudohermaphrodite. And they are male pseudohermaphrodite and female pseudohermaphrodite. The female pseudohermaphrodite is going to have the genotype as XX with 21 hydroxylase deficiency. The male pseudohermaphrodite is going to have um, genotype XY with 17 hydroxylase deficiency. I'm not going to go into the details. I will probably do a separate video on the endocrine se section how um, 21 hydroxylase or 17 hydroxylase happens to give um, a genotype that is opposite to the phenotype that is opposite than the genotype, but in this case, I'm just going to say that in female pseudohermaphrodite, we're going to have 21 hydroxylase deficiency, and male pseudohermaphrodite, we're going to have 17 hydroxylase deficiency. Now, in true hermaphrodite, we talked about how they're going to have both testes and ovary. There is really no female true hermaphrodite because the default is always a female, right? There is only tr male true hermaphrodite where there is uh, the genotype is XY with no Mullerian in inhibiting factor. They're also going to have, obviously, testes and ovary. So you get the general overview of um, true hermaphrodite, pseudohermaphrodite, and how complete androgen insensitivity syndrome kind of falls under the group of pseudohermaphrodite. Now, they not only fall under the pseudohermaphrodite, they fall under the category of male pseudohermaphrodite because complete androgen insensitivity is, is a male. 
So they have genotype XY, um, but it could be some, it, it, male pseudohermaphrodite can happen due to 17 hydroxylase deficiency, or it can also happen due, due, due to complete androgen insensitivity. So you have to keep those two in mind when thinking about pseudo, male pseudohermaphrodite. Female pseudohermaphrodite is simple because it's only due to 21 hydroxylase deficiency. Now let's quickly talk about what is going to be the different levels of uh, hormones in complete androgen insensitivity. I think it's also called CAIS, complete androgen insensitivity syndrome. In CAIS, what's going to be the level of LH? What's going to be the level of estrogen? And what's going to be the level of testosterone? Interestingly, they're all going to be high. Okay, they're all going to be high. This is the only um, sex chromosome disorder where LH, estrogen, and testosterone are all going to be high. So if that is given in the vignette, that is also a big clue in terms of what CAIS is and how you can differentiate between other disorders. Now the next thing that I want to talk about is 5-alpha reductase deficiency. 5-alpha reductase deficiency does not really fall under those categories. They are kind of different from true hermaphrodite, pseudohermaphrodite, but they're going to start off with ambiguous genitalia. And this is going to remain ambiguous until they hit puberty. This puberty is going to cause increased testosterone le levels, causing masculinization of the genitalia. A lot of the times they say penis at 12, so at, that's when the ambigu ambiguous genitalia is going to turn into uh, male genitalia with the increased amount of testosterone that is available um, in the blood. Now this is why I said it's different from the true hermaphrodite and the pseudohermaphrodite because they actually end up having uh, the male genitalia in the end even though they don't start off with it. In this case, LH, estrogen, testosterone, they're all going to be normal. LH could be a little elevated but still on the normal range. Now let's look at the question that we have here and see if we can kind of dissect it and come up with a reasonable answer. So the question says that an 18-year-old woman comes to the physician because she has not yet menstruated. Physical exam shows normal external genitalia, with sparse pubic hair, and breast development at Tanner stage 5. So there is no doubt that externally this person looks like a female but we don't know what's going on internally. So when there is no ambiguous genitalia, it has to be a pseudo-hermaphrodite. If this is a sex chromosome problem, it's going to be a pseudo-hermaphrodite, but I just don't know which one it is. I don't know whether it's a male, well, it could be a male pseudo-hermaphrodite because the phenotype is a female. So I don't know whether it's due to complete, complete androgen insensitivity or it's due to 17 alpha hydroxylase deficiency. I don't know that. Okay, so let's keep reading. So, but the cervix is not seen during pelvic exam. So that also confirms that it is pseudo, male pseudohermaphrodite because there is no cervix. Which, uh, which of the following additional findings is most likely to be present in this patient? So we said that it's going to fall under pseudo, male pseudohermaphrodite. So the two options are going to be complete androgen insensitivity, and I see that that's the first option here. The other one is 17 alpha hydroxylase deficiency, which is not there. So I'm pretty sure that this is going to be our desired answer. Okay, and defect in alpha reductase, there is no mentioning how it changes with puberty. True hermaphrodite, no, it's not a true hermaphrodite because when we did the physical exam, uh, the genitalia were strictly female. Uh, female pseudohermaphrodite, so that's not all, also the case because we see the phenotype to be female uh, where the genotype could be a male. So that is also not, um, this is not a female pseudohermaphrodite.